show. Uh, today we are going to say if you're looking for shoulder trouble you've come to the right place <laughs> or at least to solve it. Uh, and uh, today we're going to look at uh, well me a lot to see that uh, I have and have had shoulder trouble. There we go much better and how that leads uh, into uh, lots of other stuff in your body and um, but it's important I think at the very outset of this stream, I would very much like to uh, emphasize one important point, and that is sometimes I, I will say, we will say that because of this, that happens. But we don't always know that it's that way around. Sometimes it's turned on its head and it, because of something else, this happens. We don't really know. Uh, and mostly, if that's the case, there aren't anybody who knows. Or at least we haven't found the sources for that yet. But what we're looking at is that there is some connectivity in the body. And you will be able to solve problems from at least one perspective. Maybe sometimes from several different perspectives. And at this particular moment, we will look at how shoulder trouble leads to my head being forward when riding. Like, nah. uh, or also the shoulders falling forward. But also other places down downstream throughout the system so the spine being formed like this at the top leads to some other trouble downstream and then that again leads to some trouble in the hips and then that will make your feet hurt in the morning or you know like it can be all sorts of different and sometimes different ways uh, here. And sometimes if you don't know all the different reasons and connections um in your body if if you just start somewhere and if you have an idea that you could start with this part and solve that, that will often start a good process in your body. Absolutely. And then it will help. Yes. Quite, quite often you can, uh, there is this saying that uh, you don't have to be uh, the leader that finds the correct solution. You just find, need to find a solution that you can make work. And then you can build on that basis. Mm -hmm. So uh, sometimes it will be enough to just stretch the front side of the thigh every night for a fortnight and you'll be fine. Or some other times it might be that you will need bigger interventions or even smaller interventions. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's enough to say, can you try to do this? And then you can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just didn't then know you, you weren't doing it, for yeah. instance. And you're like, oh, yeah, I can do that. Then and then, then, yeah. then the problem is solved if you mm. can just remember it mm. or make it uh, make it automated in your body. Mm -hmm. Should, so, shall we look at the, some pictures of you before? I wanted to say that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Let's <laughs> let's watch some some pics. Here you are. Here I am. Uh, can I can I? <laughs> Can I postpone my comment and you start, please? Don't yeah, laugh the, at me. The name of the horse is wrong. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. true. This is Hugo. Uh, Pele's first horse. Yeah. And this is the first year that we were living at the place where we live now. Mm -hmm. And you and you have actually hurt your hand as well. So you had yeah. to ride with just one hand. But this is how your body wanted to be when you're riding and you've been struggling to to sort of loosen up where in the places where you were stiff and and because but the problem was that you were so strong so these muscles were really really big and strong as well so it it takes time but what you can see is that your head is too much too too, too much strong. way much forward. and your shoulders are hunched uh, uh, like rolled forwards yeah and your knees and your feet are like, but like the feet are turned out quite hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So but, what can you say about that? Well, uh, first I can say that that whole uh, thing that the, the muscles are big and strong and all that. Of course, uh, that is a thing. But I don't think that is what actually makes it difficult to get into the correct position. 
there are plenty of bodybuilders, uh, weightlifters, mm -hmm. powerlifters, and all sorts of huge people that are exceptionally flexible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so what's, what's more is that in order to get those bigger muscles, I trained a lot. And in very, uh, in a very, what's the word, um, a very formalized uh, body language, as they say. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, the bench press takes you just through a very short range of motion. Uh, squats that are the same movement every time. And at the end of the day, or at the end of many years, that that are, those are the only motions I am comfortable with moving mm -hmm. around in and then if you insert a horse in between in between those thighs it's and you started it, it riding was, when you were 25 yeah i was 25 when i started mm -hmm. and i had a, i had a, had loads of time to to make this whole concept horrible and there is also one thing that might be relevant for others that you have had asthma for a very long time and you didn't know yeah and that uh, that might end up with you uh, using your neck muscles uh, to try to breathe more or to or to control the breathing at mm. the very least mm -hmm. uh, that the sensation I have had after having received uh, medications asthma and allergies mm -hmm. yeah you had uh, for that lots matter. of allergies um, but those two things uh, have kind of combined to make it difficult to breathe properly and I've always been extremely active mm. uh, so I always kind of subconsciously this is I, I couldn't have said this way back when but I can say it now that it, it made me try and control my breath both in and out so I always at least had the sensation that I knew how much how much um, reserves were left, sort of. Mm -hmm. That's that's the sort of the idea that's spinning in the back of my head. Mm -hmm. But at least that that's made this area quite tight. Mm -hmm. um, but there are other things that worked into that too, like the slumped shoulder sort of thing. You guys um, walking around like with your chest out like that when you're fairly young and you've got a big chest that works sort of the same way with boys as it does with girls, I suppose. Yeah. Some do it and get away with it. Mm -hmm. uh, some do it and don't get away with it. Uh, so, you, so, so you slump your shoulders to, to yeah. kind of look mm -hmm. like you don't have that. Mm -hmm. And that makes everything, of course, much worse. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, what we, we were looking at the, the picture and we can let, let's try and delve into the image a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So um, we see that the... the I get the sensation here that the thighs want to kind of squeeze in and they're pushing my butt back in the saddle a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, it still looks like my spine is sort of straight down there, but still my whole hip complex is absolutely maxed out and I can't move further for forward here. I wouldn't be able to move my pelvis forward uh, in relation to my thigh. Mm -hmm. So both in way of uh, rotation both out and in. I don't think I have any more to, to do in this position. Uh, and I am unable to kind of uh, allow the knee to swing back. So that's... And then and the very the thing that is very easy to see is that, you know, um, there should be a... Uh, it should be easy to see the, dif the difference between the your seat muscle mm -hmm. and your hamstrings. Yeah, there is just there is no uh, markings or uh, no, you can't see the difference between t those two areas. No. Your bum and your the backside of your your thigh has got the same line. Mm -hmm. And if you uh, we can uh, we can remember that and watch uh, the later pictures yeah. and see if that is different, because that means that you're actually more active in the seeds and um more movable in in the hip area yeah and now it's it it's time to talk about the stab mode perhaps the, the relation between the stable um the stable spine and the mobility in the shoulders and the hips and if the shoulders are like 
hunched to forwards and blocked in that position and the neck as well mm -hmm. it's more difficult to move the hips as well absolutely so there is um, there is connectivity all the way down yes let's uh, let's move on to next picture and see what happens this it, is a bit later I suppose yeah but it's yeah it's a little later I, but I you can still hands, see the yeah. same yeah you can still see the same tendency yeah but it is absolutely a lot better yeah I think it's because you you are concentrating on straightening up because you, you can see that your shoulder is still forward shoulders are still hunched forward mm. and, you, and you're... I'm still not able to keep my head in the correct position mm. neck looks kind of short uh, but there's big difference in the legs and hip yeah and you can also see that there is actually a little bit of difference as a kind of you can see that there's a butt and there's an, a hamstring yeah so we have been working on it then we well, yeah, obviously as just as you said can you do this yeah and you say yeah I can try and then you do it and then mm -hmm. it becomes better yeah so when the writing teacher says shoulders back mm -hmm. You can do that to to a certain extent. Yes. Also, you can see that uh, our horses have different different width, and yeah. that might be a part of it. But I remember that uh, Hugo was pretty narrow, actually. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if this is uh, if I can't remember if Laszlo was even narrower. We yeah. used the same horse mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what. It, yeah, we did actually. Mm -hmm. So they're probably the same. Meaning this is improvement, mm -hmm. and I did too improve a lot that yeah. first yeah uh, in that first year we were course, yeah. at our place so and training this, might, helps. this might easily be a year later yeah training helps yeah let's roll next do you want to talk about this it's much better what's better um i think that you're a little more relaxed in the shoulders than uh, and your neck but yeah. it's difficult to see when yeah, it's it looks just more relaxed. Picture. That's yes. I agree. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and the legs look better, but these are details. Um, yeah. Let's just uh, watch the other pictures yeah. and then we can go to the movie. It's the interesting. Videos. Interesting to go back as well. Here you can see that the shoulders are forwards. Yeah, very like, and the um, well, forwards and they kind of, kind of it's an interesting thing when your shoulders fall forward they kind of fall off their ledge. They have sort of a ledge to hang on. If you're important. able to keep yeah. keep your shoulders back in the right position and you put some weight pressure on top of that shoulder right mm. here, it feels like it doesn't budge. But then mm. if it goes forward it's a kind of everything goes saggy mm. and and it just keeps keeps dropping. I'll try and sit straight. Like this. This is this is my straight at the moment. Mm. So we need both of those. We need to be like that to get to the, to I the right I used to be position. like this as well. Yeah, very different. much so. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Roll on. More, more pictures or video. I don't know how far we've got yet. Last picture. Last picture. Brilliant. Thank you. All right. So this is this is interesting for me because uh, in this picture, you can see that I've managed to get my bum underneath me. I sit way far further forward in the saddle. You see that? Mm -hmm. uh, but now my legs have start, started struggling a little bit again and are coming up and forward a bit. Yes, but the, your legs, uh, your lower leg is uh, is more of the correct place. That is because you're collecting the horse as well. Yes, yeah, so I'm bending more at the knee as well. Yes, yeah. perhaps. Mm -hmm. But still, head forward, head and shoulders still hunched. You can see here. There's an effort to keep the, especially the the near hand, the one that's nearer us. Keep that shoulder back. You can see that, but that just leaves you know you know this uh, the old uh, saying for in in riding air shoulder hip mm -hmm. and this ankle. ear is too much to the front. Yeah, you can make a line, but it'll be broken. <laughs> in all sorts of ways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like follow these. And then, yeah. So what we are going to do today is to to look at exercises that we can do our. Uh, do some exercises mm -hmm. and some easy things that you can do at home. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To to because you come to a certain point yep. in the your training and then it's stuck. Yeah. And then teacher says shoulders back and you try and you try and then it's you can't do it. Yeah. And of course there can be 
uh, shoulder pain. Mm. Many writers say, you know, I can't do this because it's so painful in my shoulder. And it, it's related. The, it, either you're just stuck or you try to move it and it's painful. Or it's painful even to just ride. Yep. For many people. Yep. And so uh, today we work on the low level. Uh, that doesn't mean that this doesn't work on a high level. This is what I what I do kind of regularly to get keep, get and keep my shoulders and my neck in the in a good outline, a good position. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to keep my shoulders in the correct position, and I need to work a lot on the on the neck and some on their shoulder shoulder rotation. And of course, I also work out mm. in the gym uh, with some sort of uh, uh, focus towards moving better. But uh, but you know I like to lift as well, so it's not always the hardest focus. All right? Do we have some video there? We have videos from uh, from when you were riding before. Cool. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let's look at them first. Let me close my eyes first. This isn't so far so far back, is it? No. Nope. Couple of years maybe. But you see your hunch forwards still. Hunch at the back and yeah. the head. And the more you you sort of um, concentrate. Yeah. The more the more you're hunching. Yeah. And I I, I do the same, so um, I'm not complaining. Yeah. We're just we're so just... you also see that because the upper back is hunched, or again uh, back to the to the caveat at the beginning doesn't have to be because of, but what we see is that shoulders are hunched forward, the upper back is hunched forward, head hangs in front of the vertical quite a lot in front of the of the spine. And you can see the lower back is actually moving quite a lot. And my hips are not following the horse forward, but the whole pelvis complex is kind of going back and to, uh, side to side with the horse. Mm. See that? Yeah. Mm. And I think all of that is because of this upper back thing. Mm. It's, you should actually lift your whole upper body up together with the, uh, with the movements that yeah. the horse is moving. And like we know that I was at this point able to move through the hips enough to follow this movement at mm -hmm. least. Mm -hmm. So I should be able, but I didn't do it and it's probably probably due to that. I've been touching those muscles and they are very stiff. Yeah. So we're going, we're going yeah, to yeah, go yeah, into yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Let's look at uh, some more uh, back in the day, not so mm -hmm. good riding. Oh, best I is can This is uh, the first time that the horse has been like trotting under under rider in the lunge. Yeah. And you can see that Pelis struggling to just sit there without um, interfering with the horse. Yeah. I can see that. But it's quite good. It's not bad. Uh, and and you, you know, see they... the rhythm is really, really uneven. Yeah. But I'm trying to follow it to the best of my ability through my hips. Uh, I'm keeping the, the back isn't too bad, but the head and neck still hanging forward. Yes. And you can see also that my hands kind of, they want to fall in. So the thumbs want to fall down. Mm -hmm. And that is because of the lack of rotation in the shoulder. Yeah. Because the shoulder, because is, the, the shoulder is turned like, like really rotated in the wrong way. And then your hands. Yeah, it's yeah. the, um, the rotation in the shoulder should happen at the shoulder joint. So the, the upper arm should be allowed to move freely. From the shoulder but most of the time if you're not very very able in that area your shoulder will translate forward like that so the shoulder blade does that and then your whole the whole complex becomes rotated to the inside and that wants to bring the hand in like that and that is also the reason why people often get pain because the, the muscles around the shoulder get really Tired. Yeah, they get into very weird positions because mm -hmm. of that, and they so don't they have get to the... carry your arm in a in a weird uh, yeah way. Yeah, lots of lots of weird stuff mm -hmm. going on there. Right, cool. Is there more before stuff? I think there is one. More one more before? before. Cool. And then we I go just, to the. I just poured in a lot. <laughs> poured in a bunch of movies. That's what we like to do. Yeah, yeah and the whole body is shaped well. like a C. Yeah. And you see when whenever you're concentrating, the, your legs uh, creep forward. Yeah. And again, if we watch this one more time now, I, I'm only going to say this once. Pay attention to my ass. <laughs> see? Bum. You can quite easily see 
there's a difference between the thigh and the butt there. You see that? Yep. So I am absolutely able here to move through the hip. Mm -hmm. But it is really difficult. Mm -hmm. And again, that's because the upper body doesn't align with the, like the upper part of the spine and the head doesn't align with the rest of the, yeah. of the body. And I, um, I've said many, many times, lift your head, but that is not possible. I have tried. I tried. I can to, lift it. I've tried to to uh, loosen those muscles, and they are they feel like bone. Nah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll have. Do. We'll think and think and look more <laughs> on that later. All right. So, so we're going to to look at what we have been doing. Yeah. So uh, what we what we have done is to try and restore that uh, that rotation, but also we have tried to open up this whole area, like uh, from the air and uh, down in on the top of the uh, collarbone, mm. on the inside there. Mm. There's a huge complex of muscles in there, mm. and they have a bunch of different uh, yes. and, and abilities. They can do loads and loads yeah, of stuff. Functions and, and they function together. So mm -hmm. they are lying in layers. Yeah. So one, one is pulling that way, and the other is pulling that way, and yeah. they have to move in, in a symphony. Like, uh, it's just not just one muscle at the time. All these are working together. And uh, we're not going yeah, to show as you... as one big Gordian <laughs> knot. Yes, sometimes <laughs> that actually end, it ends up like that. That's what, just... my, that's what it sometimes feel like in here, at least. Yeah, and yeah. Um, but um, we're not going to talk about uh, specific muscles because... Um, and we don't care so much about what the the different muscles. The, the physiotherapists and and specialists like that, they will need to know about that. You don't you don't need to know about. The and if you muscles. want to know that, go to some physical yeah, yeah. therapist Google and, it. and you'll learn. Or, or Google it and yeah. learn more. That yeah. is uh, very very uh, very useful. Yeah, absolutely. But if we uh, if I can touch your neck here, uh, yeah, on the side. There are muscles. There is one big muscle here and some smaller muscles, some, some muscles on the inside mm -hmm. that are actually, when they are too tight, they're actually pulling the head forward like that. Yes. And if they get really short, they're also like making the neck shorter. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. Like a, you like see the, how it's... The, the whole chest sort of... Yeah. Implodes like that. And if all... <laughs> Everyone's laughing. <laughs> yeah, look at the difference. <laughs> we have horses that are like this. You know, that is why why we want the horse to stretch its neck before yep. it, it sort of. Yeah. Yeah. So but I saying? used to be I used to be very much like that. Mm -hmm. Like really, I can't do it any longer. But then I can now stretch and my neck feels longer and I can do things like this. Yep. And then the shoulder is. Now it's like because I've been operated on so many times, uh, lots of things are like um, not straight in my body. So you can't look at look at that. But I, you can see that the shoulders are are much more even. Much more. Yeah, yep. absolutely. So what what have we done? Uh, well, uh, shall we look at some videos? Yeah, let's see. Let's see. There the are videos. some videos uh, that with uh, with an audio. So. Um, then we have to shut up and just listen to what I'm saying during the video. Oh no. Mm. Okay. What I do is I, I first put my hand on top of this sort of round piece of his shoulder here. And I try to press his shoulder blade down against the, the surface of the bench and I wait because sometimes this is quite painful and he breathes deeply just as when the untangling process because that helps his chest muscles to stretch and you know all the, all the places where this is painful and stretching and then when he feels okay with this I start Put, not pushing hard, but just like letting his his lower arm 
move like this yeah and this makes the shoulder joint underneath my left arm rotate because often this the the joint is not rotating and now can you see if i can let his hand mo touch the bench yeah and that is well done all righty so we saw me being tortured a bit uh hannah was twisting my arm actually uh, i'm showing your body that it has actually got the shoulder joint yeah yeah not just the scapula or the, yeah it's, the that, it's that thing again when when uh, when i put my arm out like that if i want to rotate i want to rotate like that much easier to use the whole mm -hmm. the whole shoulder complex and move the shoulder blade forward and then i can move my arm to wherever i want it right but uh, this isn't a very good position for the little muscles on the back here to be in and also everything in here just is allowed to stay very short all the time so we had to roll the shoulder back to the right place and then she held my shoulder down to the table right and then twisted my arm not forcefully no just helping mm -hmm. me kind of move down and if there's a bit of resistance you can push back a bit mm -hmm. against the resistance and relax and then you can trick the body into going deeper and deeper into that. Mm. Um, and it's a great movement that helps the, the body understand that there's uh, this extra joint here that is normally not accessible. Yeah, because many people, you know, the nervous system is not actually aware that this is that it, it's possible to rotate in that, mm -hmm. that joint. Yeah. So they, as you said, that it, yeah, the, it they're doing this. the whole shoulder blade yeah, translates so, forward. So it's a good movement or a good exercise to show the body to do that. And you mustn't, as you said, you mustn't push very hard because then the body will just resist. Yeah. So and also it hurts. Like a breathing that is very efficient to to breathe like deeply with, through your nose. Mm -hmm. And we're going to show that in one of the other videos, how important yeah. it is to breathe. In a so way. we've done that movement uh, fairly often. Um, I'd say. Yeah. Uh, also, it's a thing that when you, as soon as you've learnt it and felt it, you can sort of test it out in different movements and see if you can keep your shoulder in the right position and still rotate your arm. Like if you want to move your reins or hands around or whatever, mm -hmm. whatever else you may be doing. So that whole ability to move the arm like that makes a massive difference. Mm -hmm. And it makes the whole body able to keep everything stable. Here's a, here's a thing that you guys need to need to understand. In order to hold the shoulder back properly, it is important to use these muscles, this big back muscle here, the latissimus, the broad back muscle, and that connects down all the way into the spine. So all the way into the lower like half of the spine or something like that. That thing goes that big muscle, biggest muscle in the upper body goes there into those into that uh that whole big flat um, uh, um, connective tissue there mm -hmm. uh, and helps keep the body upright. So yeah, it so keeps it the lower part of the spine stabilized because I keep my upper body stabilized. Yes. So it's really like, what? Shoulders, Two for one? Shoulders, I don't have that. Shoulders back and then down a little. Yeah. Then you get back that and down stability. And get that muscle doing mm -hmm. its job. And when you keep that there, your arm won't move forward. Whatever, are, you can pull as much as you like and nothing is going to move. Yeah, but sometimes the but writing teacher like will this. say, uh, you know, chest forwards. Yeah. And then sometimes that ends up with your swaying too much in your yeah. lower back. It's very easy to put your chest or yeah. the lower back forward like this. This is sort of the chest forward. It's also the belly forward. That's wrong. Yes. You have to take this, the rib cage, and kind of punch it down so you... <laughs> You yeah. lock it down there and then you pull your shoulders back and now you can do whatever you like. And then relax so you can breathe and move yeah, slow. So many, many people have supplements. sort of, they're com like com collapsed in their, yes. in their rib cage. Yeah. And then when you collapse like this, the muscles here get really short. Yeah. So it's difficult to pull your shoulders back because these muscles are, are sort of 
Yeah, and they never do anything Ooh. proper. No, they're uh, just and, hard. And all the muscles on the backside are stretched out to a to a very compromised position. And often it's like weak. this: if we straighten out Hannes' arm like this, and can you pull your arm up? <laughs> no. Very difficult here, right? Yeah. And if you keep your arm here, can you pull your arm now? And you're much stronger mm -hmm. because the muscle gets into a position where it's stronger. Mm. So it's stronger when it's shorter. Yeah. So if we stretch out all these back muscles mm -hmm. like this, mm -hmm. they will be in a very compromised position. And, and that's weak. one of the reasons that a lot of a lot of people have trouble around the scapula and mm. have lots and lots of pain there. Oh, and keep referring to that and keep making that pain go away. Use a ball and roll around on it and all that stuff, which mm. is good. But it, the problem has become this. This movement has means that all of this is too short and also all of this stuff back down in the neck. So when we're talking about they like pushing or pressing on muscles or putting a ball to mm -hmm. muscles mm -hmm. later on in the later videos, um, you could use it, use them here as well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I've done Shall that we see quite another a lot. Movie? Let's roll on. Or Let's film. roll on see if there's more fun to be had. Here we got Pelle on his stomach on the bench and looking at his back so well, there are several places or pieces of areas in his back that we are interested in when it comes to the shoulder um this area here is the latissimus dorsi or the lats as we call them and there is the the thoracic um, back or spine here you can see that his back is a little like this way here and we know that he's he's got some tension here and in the the rotator cuff pillar where is that here here somewhere lots of stuff around the shoulder blade around the shoulder blade you know the shoulder blade is here if you feel here you can feel the bone it's sort of a triangle or bone here and there are always a lot of stuff around there. And with, if you do, you can, you know, this this is a lacrosse ball. It's quite hard. And uh, we're using the, uh, that one. And if you lie on this, uh, now I'm showing you sort of the backside, but if you lie on your back and you put this back in this ball, for instance, here, if I press here, yeah, <laughs> he grunts. You know, the spine is here. And there are muscles going on both sides of the spine. And those are often, uh, they have often knots and tension. So if you just put the, the ball here and lie on it, and you stretch your arms up and move your shoulders, you will feel where in the shoulder or where in the back your individual tensions are because these are different these tensions are different for each person and you can do it here on the lats the same thing that you um that when you're doing when you're lying on the back you just put the the ball on those spots and you lie on them and you just breathe All righty right. then. <laughs> so normally uh, I would be, of course, as we said in the in the little clip, be lying on my back and performing that all that pain on myself with the ball, the pain ball, as it's referred mm -hmm. to. And, uh, this particular one is a lacrosse ball. Uh, if you're a little bit, um, if it's too painful, if you're a bit of a princess, you might be <laughs> use a tennis ball instead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, the lacrosse ball is. Uh, uh, of a good size for this particular work and it's hard enough to really get into the stiff stuff in the back mm -hmm. There's a, wooden one. A, a wooden one would also do good mm -hmm. like a crocket mm -hmm. croquet mm -hmm. I don't know what it's called in English mm -hmm. ball those would will, will also do really really nicely mm -hmm. um, and that will take away a lot of the knots 
or, or down the back mm -hmm. that a lot of riders have and naturally get from mm -hmm. riding. And of course, we also get it from all the office uh, work or, or, or the, the gaming thing. or whatever mm -hmm. we're doing. <laughs> yeah. Car. Mm -hmm. There's several, several Shall other we ways. Just just plan the through. next ones and then we'll see, see what we have missed. <sighs> and here you can see that he waits. And breathes until it's not so painful anymore. And then after a while, he'll start moving the arm. And this is the shoulder joint. The ball is now on the inside of the shoulder. <laughs> feels very weird sometimes. Oh. This refers pain all the way up here, right. the front of the shoulder. And if you're experiencing referred, referred pain, like pain another place than where the ball is, then you know that you found the trigger point. And that is quite helpful. I because always remember uh, if it feels like you're going to die, it's because you're going to die. Don't <laughs> do it. <sighs> Good job. All right, that was a bit of lying on the back and, uh, and breathing. Yeah, breathing and trying not to, well, die. <laughs> so the breathing, you want to talk about the breathing? Yeah, I think we have another video as well about um, the untangling that we have but had several other videos about or streams about. Mm -hmm. uh, the technique that helps, um, it helps you loosen up all the knots in your, in your, in your muscles that are stiff. And uh, the whole... The important thing about um, letting your or trying to relax when you try to 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 work on the, those knots with a ball or with with your hands mm -hmm. is that you need to to uh, breathe really deeply and slowly because that helps relaxation. It mm -hmm. helps the parasympathetic. Par parasympathetic uh, nervous system yep. that is responsible for the um, for your relaxation and also for for letting go of the tension. Mm -hmm. So deep breath is just like um, everyone who has um, got children has <laughs> like gone gone through a birth. Mm -hmm. They know how it's uh, it's actually helping to learn how to breathe. Yep. And that helps also when you're, you know, when you're trying to to get stiff muscles to, to loosen up. Yep. So is there a um? Let's see. Uh, let's see just the other videos because there are, the videos about um, training inside in your living room. Yep. Sure. And here. Some face pulls. That's just a, a rubber band. And I'm doing face pulls because I want to train those muscles that rotate the shoulder out and keep the shoulder blades back and together. So you're actually working so the shoulder blades are going towards each other. Yeah, a bit towards each other. Opening up the shoulder shoulders in front and pulling them together. In the back. So then you're actually also stretching the muscles on the front. Yeah, a bit like and, yeah, like a training. Just a little bit, at back. least opening up that that whole area just a little bit while I pull back. And these elastic bands, you can buy them on the net. Net, and I yeah, guess you can also, also buy them in most sports stores nowadays. Yeah. And they're not very expensive. No, not at all. And they're very. It's very easy, very accessible, 
And the point here isn't to get big bulging muscle. It the point here is to move yourself in that in that area, train yourself to be short in that area. That mm. that with most people, all the all of us with forward translated shoulders and head, all of us need to get stronger and more used to keeping our shoulders and head back. Mm. All right. Yep. Roll yep. next. Mm. Another same uh, same rubber band. These are pull aparts. So I try to open my shoulders, you see, I try to bring my shoulders kind of out and as wide as possible in every move. Stretch your arms out outwards. Stretch my arms out, kind mm -hmm. of not only stretch them stretch them out, but also kind of bringing them even further out. Hmm. Yep. Next, Making as long one. as possible. Yep. I think the next one is from the back. Yeah. Yeah, that's the uh, same. Here exercise. you can see your lats as well, <laughs> you know. Just about yeah. see a little bit, yeah. Yeah, so that is uh, interesting when you talked about uh, you know, pulling the shoulders backwards and downwards, mm -hmm. because you know the the his muscles here just under the shoulders they are the ones who are pulling the shoulders down, and then you need to be active there as well. Yeah, absolutely. Or else the shoulders will go up. Yep. Okay. Cool. Next, next one. This is for the rotation of the shoulder that we talked about. So I'm trying to rotate the upper arm without the shoulder blade moving. I'm not 100% able, but it isn't half bad. And if you haven't got a, a, a dumbbell, dumbbell like that, you don't you need can, much weight here. As you, this is a, this is a good weight for me, and it's a like bottle what, with three or four kilos or something, kilos like, or something yeah. like that. Yeah, you don't need much at all. Yeah. You work with horses, you've got something as heavy as this for sure. Yeah. And just do that a bit with both arms. Brilliant, brilliant training that any physical therapist will will tell you to do anyway. And this if you do this each day. Yep. A little each day. Yeah, a little help. little goes a long All way. Here. It is, it's important here that the to understand that this isn't strength training. No. Not at all. This is movement practice. Mm-hmm. So what you're doing here is you're trying to practice those movements that will help your body be better aligned when you ride. And it isn't so that you get big and strong and all that. We can do that. We will do that later on and show you how to train proper strength as well. But this is a very good way to start. Very low, uh, very accessible from any level. You can do these movements without hurting yourself like absolutely everybody. With two exceptions, and you already know because your doctor told you or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, so that all of those try to train you to keep your shoulders back and down and be able to rotate your shoulder properly without your shoulder blades moving about. And it opens up the whole front of your body as well, mm -hmm. makes it much easier to sit straight and sit right. Mm -hmm. Okay, shall we try the next one? I've practiced. I believe head and shoulders are way better positioned now. And you can see that you're much more uh, supple in your back and your your hip joint. Yeah. Sorry about the clothes and stuff, but you see the weather hasn't been perfect around our place uh -huh. lately. This was yesterday. <laughs> yeah. So you can see just. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna be real like uh, rooting for myself here. If you watch this video, watch how my butt sits in the saddle throughout the stride at the trot. Just let it go a little bit. First, as we get into the trot here, in a few sec, I believe, as soft as can be. And now, we put it in slow motion, and here we go. Now I'm able to relax and sit proper down in the seat. You see? Mm -hmm. No movement at all in the seat bones. I would, good. I, well, you can, maybe it's you can spot it, but it's... It's pretty good. Yeah, and, it's and much this, better. The horse's stride is 
ultra soft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, and that, 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 is, that isn't the you know the horse's stride isn't separated from your seat. It is actually made by. Or you can act, or at least you can make it soft to sit. So you see, shoulders have come back quite a lot. Head has come up and back quite a lot, and I'm able to do this. I think there's even one more video of the same stuff, yes. isn't there? Is this the next move? No, it's not. It yeah, it is. Yeah, mm. cool. The last one. Cool. So this is the last one, and I'm able now to just sit there and look up and have fun, laugh. Because it's easy to sit like that now. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean I never never forget. Because sometimes I forget and I, when I struggle. And I sit there and yeah, you, you cuss myself. It is habit as well. Because mm -hmm. you can see sometimes you remember to look up. Yeah. And then you, it's easy, easier for you to look up. Yeah. Uh, but it's, you have the habit. So when you're concentrating on the horse, you yeah. look down. Yeah. But that's okay. But is it there? You, you mm -hmm. try and I didn't rem remind you, you just did it when you were you rem remembered that, oh yeah, I need to look up. Yep. But then now you're able to do it. Mm -hmm. So there are two other things that we have, uh, we haven't, um, we haven't any videos of that. We should perhaps take that another time. That is the untangling, you know, when, when we are, um, and we can show that a little because we have time. Uh, I do, you, you can see that on the side here, well, there is one muscle that goes from there and down to the collarbone. Uh, and if we go behind that, and I push with my thumb down here, and I find sort of a, a crack between the muscle there. Yeah, you can see that he goes his eye. There, is Feels there a great. tricky point there? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what is there? Is it painful? It is painful. Yeah, but it does. He it doesn't need to refer the pain to be efficient. No, no, but to be a trigger point. If it TM. is painful, is more painful than than. Yeah. And then he started breathing. I wasn't because, able to relax enough until then. Yeah. So then you if you breathe, and especially if you're able to breathe through your nose. And this is much more efficient if you lie on the bench on on the couch or something. And I can feel through my thumb that his muscle is starting to relax and become a little more like movable. And then I can follow. I feel that then now the, the crack in between the the muscles are sort it's sort of uh, opening up a little. And then I follow. I follow the, um, the crack or the opening in the crack and the, then I find another opening and this is, yeah, did, did you feel that as well? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. you can see I'm not very strong so I'm not pressing very hard but it's also a practice thing. And this is what we have been doing mostly to, to be able to, for you to be able to actually stretch your neck yeah I like that and try to, to to show that yeah show the difference again between you know oh yeah uh, between this so uh, when i can keep my my head and shoulders in a fairly good position or the way i wanted to keep my head and shoulders before this is what you were before actually it's it, it's very strange to see that now and that is pos possible because we have managed to to let these muscles become longer and more relaxed yeah and then it's possible for the body to stretch the spine in your neck yeah one uh, interesting thing uh, of course many of you guys might have might know this from before uh, one of the things that really did, uh, made me buy into the whole uh, untangling of the neck sort of thing was that I was able to PR my bench press straight from, from the from the bench from the what do you call it treatment bench, mm -hmm. uh, and that it's a funky thing because when we were working in here, there are points in here that refers pain down into this muscle, the mm -hmm. tricep, the the muscle that stretches your mm -hmm. 
your elbow. So it refers into there, mm -hmm. which is which I only ever can feel under a big load in the bench press when it when it gets too heavy. My shoulder rolls forward, and then it th this thing just stops working. Mm -hmm. And that happens sometimes. I think that might have happened when I had I had like a semi accident in the in the floor press. And I right, yeah. wanted to drop the bar into my face. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, the yeah. uh, the oh, it's not luck. It's by design. The weights are big enough that your head has more or less room under. But did feel like getting kicked in the teeth real good, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but that that whole thing made me believe that this this actually works. Yeah, it does, and it works in in ways that are very difficult to trace beforehand. At least afterwards, it's like, oh yeah, I can kind of. But I don't know why pulling, pushing here refers pain down to the, like, to this area here. Mm -hmm. Just behind the elbow in this area. The you know that point, where, what, do you, what do you call that point? When you hit that point, your your yeah, whole really body painful. goes limp. Mm -hmm. That. That point. Around there. Uh, nobody actually knows. There are many theories about how why the trigger points refer pain. Yep. But uh, let's not go into that. Oh, we it, don't have to. I'm just. It's just interesting that yeah, it, I it can, works. I've tested it mm. with weights, and it works. We we even got violinists that get better at playing the violin and the, and the. The quality. stupidest thing I've <laughs> ever heard is that the the sound of the violin improves. Yes, it's and everyone can hear it. Yeah, just because the neck muscles got longer. And it's uh, probably got something with the the resonance in the bones, so you, so you can rest that thing on the bones instead. It's like when you uh, when you're shooting, yeah. The when you're lying down shooting, you want to lie only on your skeleton. Yeah. You don't want any soft stuff to to kind of mm -hmm. or your heart to kind of bump around and stuff <laughs> like that because that makes you miss everything mm -hmm. at a long long distance. So it's kind of so I was thinking maybe that's the same. It's same all line about the structural there. integrity of the. Of the of, thing of the the body, yeah, and then that is the same when you ride, mm -hmm. when you can are able to sort of uh, stabilize your cell skeleton mm -hmm. on top of each other, yeah. So everything balances. It's much easier to balance, and it's easier for the horse to carry you, mm -hmm. and it's easier to relax through your joints so that you're yeah. movable and more relaxed. And if you get relaxed enough, the horse becomes so plush to sit. It's so it's just mm -hmm. everything is easy. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, you know what what they say and I try to say it as often as I can um, to be in balance is easy to get into balance is just horrible that is it's the... the hard job we are mm -hmm. we all have in front of ourselves mm -hmm. all the time right so um, I the, what we're going to continue doing is every other stream we're going to talk a little about exercise that you can do off the horse Um and then we go back to exercises for the horse. Yeah. Um, uh, I want to now, uh, after having seen these uh, couple last videos, let's go back to the first yes. picture, shall we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, nah, that guy couldn't do that. No, you can see, see the hip is... Uh, that hip joint is not going to let the horse move your bum forwards without um, you jumping in the saddle. It actually looks as if the hip joint of this guy is placed in the black, not in the white. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you got hmm. your hip joint in your waist or something? Yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah, and, and there's an, and I have no back. And it's no back muscle. No, but That's it's a, it's so strange because it's it's easy to think that the shoulders shouldn't have anything to do with the, the movement through the hip joint, mm -hmm. but it has. It does. Mm. Uh, like we said, if you're able to keep your shoulders back, your and lats will be engaged, the wide and big strong back muscle, and that will help stabilize the whole spine. Mm -hmm. And then and the you... the hip hip joints can move. Yes, and if you're Shoulders are locked forward because of some shortness here or weakness on the back or whatever the case may be for all that. Because of that, your lats can't do their job. It is virtually impossible to get your lats to do any, any proper job when you get in that position. 
and that that whole thing that lets him uh, in uh, in power lifting like lifting weights boring slow weight lifting when you do the bench press the the very best bench press people say that you need a very strong back in order to bench press properly mm -hmm. and i always thought well the chest bench presses and the arms that's got to be it right uh, and of course that is where where the movement comes from but if the back doesn't stabilize back there your arms will rotate the wrong way and mm -hmm. there is no stability or anything like that and mm -hmm. you, there is no you can't push with your legs to get your spine to help with mm -hmm. that movement nothing works then but if you get your lats engaged properly then you can lift heavier weights with more safety feel stable mm. everything is much better so stabilizing the spine and that is the same with the horse you know getting the horse over the back is about stabilizing the spine yeah. so the horse can carry the rider in a better way yeah and then he can move through the hips and kick off with the with the hind legs yeah so it's the same with the horses yeah cool so, stuff i believe so are, are we going to talk about next time? I think we have uh, we have a horse uh, like um, before and after videos of a horse in training, and that is a Frisian horse. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's um... our friend Mia has uh, ridden with us for years now, uh, and uh, we will show her horse before and after and her riding before and after a whole lot of training. She's done a really really tough job of training the back of that horse. Uh, uh, as we, you know, as most people know, the Frisian isn't, uh, it isn't the easiest horse to, to engage through the back. Let's put it no. that way. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's, uh, it was at one time bred in, bred to be a proper uh, carriage very, horse, very a fantastic <laughs> carriage horse. Mm -hmm. And uh, everything that has been kind of specialized in one, one direction or another, as you saw in the beginning, in the first picture, I was specialized to run fast. That's what I was. <laughs> yeah. To run fast and then take a lot of hard impacts that's well, that's what that body is meant for yeah. uh, and uh, the, the same applies for all sorts of of um, uh, specialization mm -hmm. so we have them to it is the rider's job if he or she wants to uh, to retrain the movement patterns of the horse so that it can train the right muscles to become strong and willing in movement and this thing takes time and the things we're talking about today mm -hmm. also takes time so oh, yeah. you need to be patient and do your take your pills every day you know patience is a weird thing i have absolutely no patience <laughs> whatsoever <laughs> <laughs> it is a well-known fact as you can hear from the laughter from this horrible people over in the, yeah. in the corner and my wife even uh, and still I'm able to do these things. The reason I can do it is I obsess with it. <laughs> that is the only way I can make myself do things. I obsess with it. Like, you know, you obsess with brushing your teeth. You do that every morning, every night, maybe. Uh, and uh, if you do this, this stuff as well, do some of your shoulder exercises every morning, every night. And don't come here and tell me you don't have two minutes in your day. I don't believe that. So that's done over and done with. Mm. Everybody has that time. But the, the trick is you must take that time if you take that time it'll improve you all of you and the whole improvement will make every day better it will make every day more efficient uh, except those days when you just want to curl up into a fetus and cry those don't change but that's just a joke um, anyway so uh, take your medicine do it as often as you can. Do small doses. Some days uh, obsess about it all day long because you don't have anything else to do and then suffer for two days after because everything is sore. That's fine. <laughs> and then some days do 15 seconds. But do 15 seconds. And if you do, you'll have a little pillow on your shoulder telling you you're, you did great all day long. <laughs> Isn't that right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but okay. Right. Shall so we remind people that we are on YouTube as well. We are on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Woohoo! Subscribe to us on YouTube. Please, please, please subscribe on YouTube. And make, videos, make us go viral. No, and that's the, not going to happen. The but... old videos are coming. So, yeah. Yeah, they're coming there. But there's already, there are many that are, many of the really old ones that yeah. are published there. Mm -hmm. And we are a little like ashamed of looking at them. But yeah, they are there. And the, the newer ones are coming. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So every, everything will be there later. Easier to find uh, on YouTube than on Facebook, obviously, as you can understand. Uh, so please go there and find us. 
Also, two more cool things. Uh, summer clinics, of course. We still have uh, some spots left in yes, the yes. summer clinics mm -hmm. in most of the weeks, I suppose. Yeah, there, um, there are two that are full. Mm. Two are full, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, anyway, there are uh, places available, yep. uh, and uh, all of this stuff will be incorporated in that. Don't you worry. Mm -hmm. uh, and one more cool thing: tournament season is upon us. We're already shaking. Yeah, we have a tournament not this weekend, but next. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And At our uh, home. Yeah, and uh, there will be like people from out of the country and all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. We just scared them with the beautiful weather we have these days. The with snow, loads of weather, snow and yeah. stuff coming. Fight the Norwegian regions <laughs> in the snow, as you see. <laughs> so it's snow. It's been snowing much more. It looks worse now, and that's brilliant. So we scared those people. I hope. Um, and uh, we will also uh, travel around. So we have several tournaments or tournament-like events that we are doing this summer. Uh, we're going to aid in Oslo, I believe. Um, we're going to uh, Bottenfjordsøra. <laughs> now, if there's anybody not from Norway, try that one on for size. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're going there to do uh, to a, a big like agricultural festival, uh, where uh, our little joust troop will do uh, will be their main event for the whole uh, the whole weekend there. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, I'm going to the World Joust Championships in Romania mm -hmm. in July, mm -hmm. and uh, the and champion we'll... of champions at Arundel. But this we're, year. we'll go, we'll. Be getting back to that later on of so course you will... but now tournament season is upon us so yeah <laughs> needs to be said yeah so we'll cool. say goodbye to people i think yeah. we are we have um used our hour we've used up our hour mm -hmm. as uh, normal so shoulders back put people don't yeah, remember yeah. Mm -hmm. if you're looking for shoulder trouble <laughs> or the solution to shoulder trouble you come to the right place <laughs> goodbye goodbye see you later guys <laughs>